Good morning. Today I'll be speaking on the subject of painful hope. We'll be looking at um, scriptures such as Psalm 126, 1 Peter chapter 5, particularly verse 7, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, in the um, early part of that chapter, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 to 37, and perhaps Judges in the story of Gideon and Genesis in the story of Joseph. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that you are the source of all our hope. Thank you that you are with us in our trials, that you bear our pain, Father. Pray that as I speak, you would speak through me, you would speak to the heart of everyone listening to this, whenever they are listening, Father, wherever they are listening, in whatever situation they are listening. Pray that you would encourage, bring hope, bring bring the courage to have hope, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. So sometimes when things are going well, it is easy to have hope. But at other times, it can be difficult to have hope. Or when hope is offered, it can be painful to receive that hope. It can be painful to hope in something when we have had disappointment with that thing in the past, when hope in the past has disappointed us. If you, if you look at Gideon, when when the angel came and talked to him, at first he was he was skipped he was skeptical. How can God be with us if we are in this bad situation? We look at Joseph. When Joseph was in prison, what would Joseph have been feeling or thinking? When after two full years, after days and weeks and months in prison had blended together until it felt like he had been there forever, until he had probably almost forgotten interpreting the dreams of the baker and the butler, it felt like he had just spent his whole life in prison day after day, week after week month after month, year after year, when suddenly guards come and grab him, drag him out of his cell, what would he have been thinking? What would you have wondered if you had been in his place? He probably wouldn't have automatically known or assumed that he was going to be taken before Pharaoh. Perhaps he was just he was wondering if he was going to be, whether he would be executed or simply moved to a small cell. Maybe a small part of him might have hoped his situation might improve a little bit. But it might have been painful to, for him to have too much hope. He might have been, he might have even been hesitant to hope too heavily, even after he'd been given clean clothes and a haircut. Then if we look later at Joseph's story, how did Joseph react when he saw, when beyond his hope, he saw his brother Benjamin for what could have been the first time? There was a song that I'll include in the description from a movie of Joseph's story, You Know Better Than I. I'd even encourage you to potentially pause this video here and listen to that song and come back to this message. Now, if we look at the story of Elisha and the Shunammite woman, Elisha was a guest of this woman and her husband. And he wanted to show gratitude as a prophet. 
And so he prophesied, he asked God, he prayed for her and prophesied that she would have a son. This time next year, you'll have a son. But if we think about the, the woman's perspective, if she had been hoping for a long time for a son until after hope had disappointed her so many times, it had become painful to hope. If she had had disappointment after disappointment, the text doesn't tell us, but it, she might have had miscarriages in the past. So when Elisha tells her that she's going to have a son, it makes sense that her reaction would be, how dare you give me hope? How dare you give me this painful hope? And then, and then later, after she does, after the prophecy comes true, she has a son. But then, when the son is just a few years old, and he is still young, suddenly he gets struck with a mysterious sudden illness, and within within hours he is dead. This hope that she had been given, that had seemed to be coming true, had suddenly been taken away again, had been snatched from her once again. But what does she do? She avoids, she doesn't tell anyone else, she doesn't even tell her husband who knew that the child was sick, or the servants. She ignores voices that would encourage discouragement or despair. She immediately prepares to go to the prophet who, prof who prophesied about the son in the first place, because that is her access. At, in that era, that was her access to the presence of God. She immediately seeks out the presence of God via the prophet. And besides, it is beneficial. In another place, the Bible tells us that it's beneficial to receive a prophet as a prophet, assuming the prophet is a true prophet. And then, when, as she seeks out the presence of God, then she finds the answer. She finds her hope restored and her son restored to her. Gideon, when the angel of the Lord met him, wasn't afraid to bring his fears before God. Surrender, he surrendered his weakness to God. There was also another story, another message preached on the story of the Shumnite that I'll try to include a link in the description. If you bring your fears, you bring your pain, bring your tears and your weakness to God, you can acknowledge, do not pretend that the problem doesn't exist. Don't pretend that your weakness doesn't exist. Acknowledge it and then bring it to God, submit it to God. Then he can turn it to strength, his strength in you. If you try to hide your problems from God and try to deal with it by yourself, or if you try to listen to doubt and discouragement, whether from yourself or from others, or even from the enemy trying to whisper doubt and dis despair in your ear, then it will probably just, just get worse. Or it may turn to pride, which is another way of this same problem getting worse. Instead, we need to acknowledge the problem, be honest with ourselves about the problem, then bring it to God. And sometimes we, sometimes we need to bring it to God, seek God by ourselves, listen to worship music, acknowledge the problem, then listen to worship music, seek, seek God's word, seek God in prayer. But sometimes it's good to seek the presence of God with other believers as well. 
whether in church or whether in a small group or whether just meeting one on one with someone you trust who you know will bring God's presence and speak encouragement and hope into your life. Don't try to don't try to hide from hope. Admit that it's painful, but don't hide from it. Thank you for listening. I pray this gives you courage and helps you face painful hope, face problems and face painful hope and return to hope. There are other related messages which I'd encourage you to listen to. I'll try to put links in the description. Now let's close in prayer. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our hope. Thank you that you have borne our griefs. That you know what it's like to be rejected. You know, you know our pain. Jesus, that even in the midst of the storms, you are in the same boat. Pray that you would restore strength, restore courage, restore hope, restore promise everyone listening and I thank you that your promises do not have an expiry date Father in Jesus name Amen